have a desire in my heart for the future. Um, not having made any plans, but there is the desire of doing what you guys do. Uh, being able to just be with people and talk about the course all the time. That is my question. Yeah, there's some beautiful, it's beautiful how the course is written with these different stepping stones and metaphors. And there's one part in the course where he's talking about this change of mind that will make the future unlike the past. And that's more the metaphor that you're talking about, where you feel like, wow, if, if I join with this purpose and I feel relaxed and confident in this new purpose, that my future will seem to be very unlike my past, which was much more closed down and isolated. And that's like a helpful use of that metaphor. Then, as you go through, we'll say, a phase of doing that a lot, and you come to see, wow, this is a whole different world and, and I feel completely different about myself, um, you'll, you dip into deeper and deeper states of, of mind that I call mysticism, where it's all very practical, like what you're feeling is very practical, and then as you dip into deeper and deeper states of mind, you begin to discover the sameness of the world, and you start to question even the beliefs around linear time, and that the future could be different than the past. And then that's a whole different, like if you were on the ocean, you're going down the trench at that point of questioning time in its, of itself, linear time as being part of the problem. And Jesus does have those metaphors in the Course too, that the past is gone, the future is but imagined, these concerns are but defenses against present change of focus. That's an entirely different quote than the first idea I shared with you, because as you drop much, much deeper, you start to realize that, that even thoughts of the future, when you get down into the deep trenches of the mind, still will be a distraction away from the moment and from the gateway to eternity. But the Course is so practical, just like when we learn to ride a bike, you know, we, we have to go out there and we have to pedal, and we have to pedal the bike, and maybe we have training wheels, little wheels hooked onto it, and then we, after a while we can take the wheels off, we can learn how to ride the bike. It doesn't mean that we will forever be riding the bike. We probably will advance, oh, I, I'm going to go for a, a scooter now, and I, I'm going to get a Yamaha, oh, Harley Davidson, I'm going for a motorcycle. You know, we may go quite far with that. <laughs> All right, with the bike, and eventually into who knows what, but eventually that could fall away too. You know, where the trinkets of the world, you know, the deeper you go into your mind and you reach these higher mystical states, then the trinkets of the world lose their, their value. But it's very practical. It's very, very step by step. And that's very much the, why when we work with people, it's very individualized. Um, we have people that come to, to be with us, or to come to just meet us in retreats, or even maybe a one-day gathering, or a two-hour talk, and it may be very significant, but it just reaches the mind in a way that is practical. And I've loved that about the Spirit, you know. People, one time I had, I had a student who worked with me very deeply, and uh, she would say, please point out to me anything that you notice in my mind that could help me on the spiritual journey. Point anything out to me that you see. It was a big invitation. Her husband was a Jewish man, Orthodox Jew, very much into his career, very much into entertainment, sports, and so on and so forth. So when I would go to their house, and I would talk to her, um, we would zoom into very subtle things in the mind that she was working on, different issues. And then he would say, oh, come on, David, come and have something to eat. And I'd go join him and watch the basketball game with me. Oh, okay, I'd go sit on the couch with him. I could easily just float around and be just at home with him, feel just the same love and rejoice with him in the same way. And, and this continued on for some time until we had some other students over and they said, why do you treat her so much differently than him? 
And I said, well, the form may look very different, but I'm just reaching and extending in what the, the invitation is. You know, he's inviting me to share the joy of the moment with some food in a basketball game, and she's saying, oh, I want much more for my time with you, and so it depends on the invitation. So, the Spirit works that way with all of us. It's just based on our invitation and our capacity to comprehend, the Spirit will work with us in a very individualized way.